14. And God has added to this because the glory is here. And we um, we say, yes, Lord, whatever you say, Lord, we will do. uh, Exodus 3.14, and God says to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And here uh, is where Moses was um, about to take the people out of Egypt. And, uh, and he's got to tell the people that God told him. He says, you know, back then there's a lot of gods, especially in Egypt. There were all kinds of gods. And, uh, and so he says, who do I tell them is sending me? You know, and he says, I am that I am. Tell them that I am is the one that sent me to you. And then he says in verse 15, this is my name forever. Uh, It's a memorial to all generations. So I am is still I am. Because we are still living in the forever. It's not just for them, it's for us now. I am is the great I am forever and ever and ever. And so let's go to um, hallelujah. Let's go to John. Uh, well, I'm going to read these real, real quick, quick to you. Uh, John 15, 5 says, I am the vine. These are all the I am's in the New Testament. The I am is still the same over to the New Testament to now modern day. So John 15, 5 says, I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. And we can't do anything unless we're hooked up with the great I am. You know, everything that we do, we have to say, Lord, here I am. You tell me what to do. Show me what to do. And, and that's part of hooking up in the vine is depending on him. Once we start depending on, on ourselves, I can do this. And uh, I know I can do it. I know... Um, it's good for good self-esteem, but when we think that we we only lean on ourselves, we get ourselves in trouble because without him we can do nothing. You know, we can do a lot of things, but he is the most successful way. He is the most, utmost, wonderful way because uh, he is everything that we need. Amen. John fourteen six says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth. And the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So I am the way which you should go. You want to know which direction? Go the God way. You know, uh, uh, he says, I am the true way, the truth way. Young people are searching for the truth. What's the right way to go? The truth way, the God way, and the life. You know, there's no life except the God life. Amen? I've been in the other life, and it's not fun. You know, the other life is... You know, the end is disaster, but the life in Christ Jesus is, is the way to go for success. John six thirty five, he says, I am the bread of life. John eight twelve, I am the light of the world. John eight twenty three, I am from above. John ten nine, I am the door. Praise the Lord. John ten eleven. I am the good shepherd. John 11:25, I am the resurrection. See, we have life in him. I am the resurrection. Hallelujah. John 8:58. Let's turn to John 8:58. Hallelujah. John 8:58. We love you, Lord. John 8, 58 says, Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And so here, uh, notice that um, Jesus is always having this confrontation with the Pharisees or the naysayers. And, uh, it, you know, just the way it was in Jesus' times, it's, it's still the same way now. There are some people that like, you know, how do you know this? And, you know, there's different religions and, uh, you know, but 
there there's always like a controversy against Jesus Christ and his word it's always against the word of God all the time but this and but that and here the Jews in verse, verse 57 says uh, the Jews had said to Jesus you're not 50 years old yet <laughs> you're not 50 years old how do you know Abraham <laughs> and have you seen Abraham so they're telling them you know have you walked with Abraham have you seen Abraham you're only he was 30 ish you know uh, and and so Jesus said before Abraham, I was, I am. And he didn't say I was, I am. I am. Because, you know, uh, God is, is the triune being. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are three in one, one in three. You know, um, Jesus, God is Jesus' father, and yet he is in him. Therefore, he is I am. When God uh, uh, created man, he said, let us make man in our image who's the us you know when i first was saved i got that right away wow us father son holy ghost wow that was such a tremendous uh, aha moment for me let us make man in our image and that was a father son and the holy ghost so you are a triune being the father is in you Jesus is in you, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is in you. When you uh, made Jesus the Lord of your life, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. It's already in you. Baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is another thing. That's just the, uh, the evidence, your power. That's your energy battery pack. Like this battery pack back here, I couldn't speak of here without the battery pack. And it helps you. And, you know, the Holy Spirit is helping you, but when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, wow he helps you even more he shows you intercede and you have that secret love language between you and god hallelujah and so being that triune being that you are you uh have a body we all have different bodies but we're all made in the image of god we all really come from abraham's loans really you know, and so we all have a similarity with each other. You know, we all look different, you know, different heights, different weights, different colors, you know, different curly hair, short hair, whatever. But we are all in the image of God. You're going to be surprised what God looks like when we get to heaven. We're going to go, look like me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. And, and you, you, you have a soul. And you live in a body. You are spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. You have a, the spirit of God. That spirit is, is what's born again. You know, your, your soul, you don't save your soul. You know, your soul gets transformed by the word of God. Because your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. <laughs> if that's a way to put it, your mind, your will. I will do this. And your emotions, ha <laughs> laughing, crying. That's, that's your soulish realm. And see, the soulish realm lines up with God's word and starts changing. So your soul doesn't get saved. It just gets changed. Your, your spirit is the one that, that uh, 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 submits to God and gets changed and says, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Therefore, in the spirit realm, you now have every gift given to you chosen by God we all have giftings you now have every right that the children of Abraham have you know you are an heir you are are a, a, you are a child of a king you I mean you have kingdom uh, uh, privileges yes. hallelujah and and we uh, uh, our time in life now is to get people born again so that they can live in kingdom privileges you know, uh, uh, Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, Our God which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. There has to be a Selah moment. Selah, pause and think about that. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Is it, it, is it, um, real cold and ugly outside in heaven nah i don't think so is it a uh, uh, turbulent and uh are there just just bad things in the heavenlies in heaven no is there sickness in heaven no is there uh all kind of addictions in heaven no unless you're addicted to jesus hallelujah that's what we need to be addicted to jesus is loving on him and uh, worshiping him and going to him 
for everything, everything, every decision you make, every thought in your mind, saying, God, does this line up with you? And we all have to, we all have these thoughts. Like, um, I remember preaching this, well, I'm going back about 30 years, 35 years maybe, to where the bad thoughts are like, like little black birds, the crows, or you know, uh, they want to nest. They they want to nest, and they're looking to nest, and 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 right on your head there's a nest, and they want to sit down, and they want to nest in you, and you have to uh, uh, those with bad thoughts, you know, little like little birdies that want to bring a bad thought that oh you are this and you are that, and you'll never make it in life, and and remember this, and they don't like you, and uh, um, you're sick, and and you'll probably develop this because of your ancestor, all these little things that want to nest in your head. And so you know what to do? What do you do? Bo, you know what to do. Bo knows. Bo always knows. What do you do? <laughs> swat him. <laughs> Just swat him. You know, you're not going to nest in my head. And, you know, see, that's, you know, part of, of uh, his kingdom come. His will be done. His will is for you not to let anything negative nest in your mind and your brain. Because once you get a thought, it goes into your heart, goes into your spirit, and, and sooner or later, you'll start talking to it. Like, oh, you know what? Uh, my uncle had high blood pressure. Uh, my grandma had a heart attack. And, uh, you know, little things the devil just can bombard you with thoughts. It is a lie, lie, lie. You know, uh, the devil, the devil's work is to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Abundantly. Abundantly, I'm not living abundantly yet. I don't have the abundant life yet. I'm walking to get there. But when I have abundant life, that means I have zero debt, zero uh, problems, and we'll get up there in heaven. You know, but you're working, you're working it out daily. You're working it out, and and and. and and uh, if you get realization that he is the one that gives you abundant life and not sickness, that means you, you're pole no more. I like, is it Brother Leroy that says, ain't pole no more. You know, and we really spiritually, we're not. You know, but we have to bring that kingdom reality into this present world where we're living right now. Hallelujah. So I like it how John 8, 58 says that, that uh, I say to you before Abraham was, I am. I am, I am has been with us and he is with us now. You know, when Jesus was uh, uh, born, born of a virgin and came to us in, in bodily form, uh, 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 he is, uh, was called and is called Emmanuel, God with us. God came in human form to be with us because someone had to die for our sins. And uh, if, if somebody spiritually died in our place, I mean, what, what use is it, is it, you know, carnally? Had to be a man. Had to be a man to shed blood, you know, instead of a, a, a sheep a, or a goat or, or whatever that sheds blood as a sacrifice. It has to be a man, you know, um, that uh, Jesus had died on the cross and he shed his blood for so much. He shed his blood so that we can live in the kingdom. Yes. So we can live in the kingdom here on earth the way it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, let's. Um, glory, 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 glory. Let's go to Isaiah 44, 6. <coughs> Excuse me. Isaiah 44, verse 6. It says, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first. I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. I am the first. I am the, the last. And, and he, he says in Revelation 1.8, uh, I'll turn there real quickly. Revelation 1.8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. Says the Lord, who is and was and is to come, the Almighty he is the I am. Hallelujah. I like it. Verse 17. It says, And when I saw him, and that's Revelation 1. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, he's talking about John, that's the, the revelator that saw this, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. 
I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. And you know what? Those keys is what he took. Sin, sickness, disease, uh, lack, poverty, all of that. Turmoil, torment. He took that away from the devil. Because he sacrificed his body on the tree. On the cross. It was made out of a tree. And, it, and the Bible says, uh, 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 Curses he that hung on the tree. He took the curse for us. We're redeemed from the curse of the law. And we're going to look at that uh, in a little bit. But he says, uh, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives. I'm alive forevermore. We are in forevermore right now. You know, we'll be gone from this uh, physical earth in a little while. But then we're going to come back for a little while. And then we'll be gone. We'll, we'll be forever with Jesus. And he guess what? But he's still going to be the I am. I am never changes. It's forever. And I am is in you. Hallelujah. I am is in you. He is in you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Going back to Exodus 3. Let's go back to Exodus 3. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Exodus 3, Exodus 3, um, 10 through 15, he says, um, he says, come now, therefore, and this is God talking to Moses, come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, I, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, I will certainly be with you, and this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Which, which he did. <coughs> Hallelujah. And then that's when he says, who do I tell him your name is? And he says, I am. So he's saying, uh, it is time, come now, in verse 10. Um, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people out of Egypt. So here now... We on this earth, we're born again. We accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We all have the ministry of intercession. We all have the ministry of reconciliation, meaning, meaning there's people out there that are not saved, and we reconcile them back to God. You know, there's a, a separation. There's uh, people that aren't saved. There's separation from God. There's the unsaved person. There's God. And then there's a big gap between. And we're to stand in that big gap until they come to Jesus Christ. And, and that is our ministry. Automatically, you become born again, you're automatically thrust into the ministry. Ministry of reconciliation. The easiest way to do that is to tell your testimony. Look at here what Jesus did for me. What Jesus did for me. He took me out of the miry clay and he set my feet on higher ground. Amen. Has anybody ever been in the miry clay? Have you? It's not fun. Have you ever physically been in a mud spot? I mean, it like sucks you in further. It's a scary thing. <laughs> you know, but God just says, come here, my child. Let me take you out of that mud. Pull you out. And I'm going to set you not on regular level ground where you're safe. I'm going to set you on higher ground, higher ground, higher ground. And he'll make, make your feet like hinds feet. Have you ever seen those um, mountain goats? Hey, there's rocks everywhere. And they're just, it's like, God, look at that. I mean, how, why, how is it they don't lose their balance or fall? They just go way on top, rocks and all. But he sets our feet like hinds feet. And he puts us on the top of the mountain because you are made to be a conqueror. He says, yay, you are conquerors through Christ Jesus. He says that. Hallelujah. So he's telling Moses, come now. You're going to have to pull people out of Egypt. What is Egypt? Egypt is bondage, hardship, pain, uh, serving a foreign god. What is the Egypt to the people out there that are not saved? Some people that are saved still are in Egypt. They have to come out of Egypt. <laughs> All they have to do is read the word and say, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. So he's saying, come. He's beckoning. And he's still saying, come. Uh, put my people out of bondage. Show them the way. You know the way. 
You know, show them me. I am the way, the truth. Show them the great I am. Hallelujah. You know, because of Jesus, you carry his name. You carry the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's, uh, I like Acts 17. If you have a pen or a highlighter or a cyber lighter, you know, highlight Acts 17, 28 and 29. It says, Acts 17, 28 and 29. It says, For in him we live and we move and we have our being. And, and this is uh, Paul talking to the men of Athens. And he's saying, Also some of your own poets, and your, your, some of your own Athenians say, For we are also his, capital H, his offspring. So they know there's a God up there somewhere. And the, the uh, Athenians, the men of Athens, they're saying uh, we are also his offspring. So they had some kind of concept. Verse 29 says, therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something being shaped by art or man's devising. So they're worshiping someone that they carved up and everything. He says, but you, you yourself say that, uh, your poets say we're the offspring of God, but you are the offspring of God. When he said, let us make man in our image, that's God in man. Adam was formed with the characteristics of God. And, and, and all, Adam all the way throughout the generations and, and then all that generation passed away through the flood but there was one righteous man Noah that still got the blood of Adam in here and then we keep going, 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 going to where we are now to where we are now we are the offspring of God that is a major thing to think about God put himself in Adam and all through Jesus he's the last Adam God is in Jesus and God is in us by not only physically spiritually he is in us so we are the offspring of God so when we look at each other we're looking at God he's a big G we're the little G big G little G those that have last name is G Gonzalez that's G that's good <laughs> no offense to anybody else but big G and little g, we are, you know, God. Because we're his offspring. We're his offspring. And when we go to heaven, that doesn't change. It doesn't change. Wow, when we get raptured up, and I want everybody to go. I want everybody to go. I want us to all be caught up in the air. For seven years. Seven years. Seven years. You know, with the Lord. Wow. Wow. We're his offspring all up there together. But then we're going to come back and do some warfare. But pray for your relatives to get left behind. You don't want your loved ones to be left behind. No, no, no. It's not going to be easy. I mean, look at the news. They're already decapitating, beheading Christians. Christians. But you know what? Um, we, we've, we are in this time to intercede for them. And that's why the glory of God is is here. It's here so that we can get revelation of who we are in Christ. So that that glory can be so strong in this house that people will come and, and the fruit is just so ripe. They're ready. They're like, save, save. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. They'll get the realization of eternity. If you know someone that's walking the line, they go to church, they sin in the world. Go to church, sin in the world. Go to work, they sin. You know, you know. we need to intercede for them. We need to pray the glory be upon them. May the glory be upon them. Because we are the offspring of God. You know, oh my gosh. It is, we need revelation of that. Um, Galatians 3, 26, 29. Let me read that really quick to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Galatians 3. It says in 26, it says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. 
This is our faith in which we live. We have faith that we're his sons. We have faith that we belong to God. We have faith that when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that we are born again and we are going to have heaven as our home forever and ever and ever and ever. <clears throat> For as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek nor slave nor free nor male nor female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. That should give you peace and rest that we are heirs according to the promise. You know, we are all spiritual beings. Oh, I can't wait for the glory to flow stronger and stronger and stronger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To mesh us closer together. Uh, Galatians 3.13 it says, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So it doesn't matter that we are not Jewish born and speak Hebrew. And we are not a replacement theology. We're not replacing the Jews. They are God's chosen people. But we are engrafted in because of this scripture. We are the Gentiles that received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior because the Jewish people couldn't quite uh, comprehend that. Even now, some don't comprehend it except the Messianic Jews. They know that the Messiah has come. Hallelujah. So what a privilege that we have that we can be called, be, ca be called the sons of God and receive all of the promises. You know, all the riches of God, all the health of God, everything, all the favor that is promised the Jewish people. We have that favor too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you notice all the most uh, prosperous businesses on the earth are all started by the Hebrew Jewish people. You know, our phones, internet. I mean, just think of the technology. It all comes from God's chosen people. Hallelujah. Uh, glory to God. Let, uh, let us say, uh, go to uh, Psalms 107. Psalms 107. Glory to God. <laughs> oh, this is good. So if you've been redeemed from the curse of the law, then in verse 107, verse 2, 1 and 2 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. That means our mouth has to say, I'm redeemed. Our mouth has to say, I'm an heir according yes. to the promise. Our mouth has a right to say, I have, have uh, been washed with the blood and I am healed. I am set free. I have no more torment. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. How many of you have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy? Whoo, man, I've been redeemed from, from the hand of murder. And from the hand of kidnapping. And, and I've been redeemed from so many things. Hallelujah. I've re been redeemed from, from policemen chasing me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've been redeemed. Hallelujah. Everybody needs to write your testimony down, okay? <laughs> and say, this is what I've been redeemed from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been redeemed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we need to say so. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, Isaiah 43. Let's go to Isaiah 43. Not far from there. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, it says in, in verse 1 uh, of Isaiah 43, But thus now says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Hallelujah. I've called you by name. You are mine. And it tells you uh, uh, later on. Let's see. Where is it? Um. Uh, verse 2 says, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, I'll not overflow you. You'll not drown. Hallelujah. When you walk through the fire, you'll not be burned. Or the smell of the flame scorched you. That, that, that smell, you won't even smell like smoke when you're walking through the fire. Hallelujah. Whenever a Christian goes through persecution, there's always a testimony on the other side. Uh, always. Always. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. So he's called us by name. We have God inside us. 
We are his offspring, and so we know that we are the family of God, and, and, and we need to speak that we are redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Therefore, we can't say the great I am, the great I am that's the way, the truth, and the life. We can't say I am broke. I am sick. I am tired. I am uh, I am confused. I am in pain. I am stupid. <laughs> Have you ever seen someone, they say it jokingly, they go, stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> Mostly in every comedy. Oh, stupid, stupid. <laughs> you know, no, the great I am is not stupid. The devil is stupid. The devil is stupid. The devil is defeated. He's a defeated foe. But we are successful. Yes. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I am strengthened. I am enlightened. I am, I am his child. I am smart. Do you know, when I was little, I went to a tent revival. And um, there was a retarded boy there. He was about, uh, about 15 years old, I would say. He was grown up and he was severely retarded. And uh, the, there was healing. Oh, wow, I've seen so many healings. And um, I was a witness of how severely retarded he was. He had Down syndrome really bad. And, uh, it, you know, he slobbered and everything. And it, it was just terrible. And they prayed the word of healing over him. And the minister said, read the Bible from cover to cover. The more you read, the more smarter you will get and he did the revivals back then were like 21 days long like the first week the first five days he was up there testifying and talking like a perfectly normal young man and he said read the bible he starts reading the bible he starts reading the word of god perfectly and by the time the 21 uh, days were over he was part of the ministry team he was laying hands on the sick his eyes changed you know, no slobbering. He was perfectly sane. So I know that if there's something that you you can't understand, um, I would say intellectually, you know, and I know there's a lot of college students online he, in here, you know, if there's something you can't understand, read the Bible. Read it and read it and read it because in the Bible is wisdom. And I saw how the Bible changed that young man's mental state. He will change us even more that we don't have a bad mental state. The more you read the word, more you read the word. Was it, someone was saying, I was hearing in the Branson campaign that, um, um, oh, those of you that are unemployed, how many hours did you work in there? If you worked four hours a day and you're unemployed, read the Bible four hours a day. In that, study the word, study the word in that time. If you worked eight hours a day, study the word within those eight hours. And, you know, give yourself a lunch break. And then at five o'clock, you can unhook. And, and he says uh, that fruit will remain. It will remain. You'll have wisdom. You'll have direction. You'll have everything you need. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, the glory is here. The glory is here. We got to, um, because we have a spirit, soul, and body, you know, it's all integrated as, as, as one. When one is, is failing and hurting, and we don't have revelation of who God is, and one is lacking just a little bit, the rest of it follows is hurt. Some, something is uh, going to suffer. You know, the body, the soul, and the spirit. If, if your body is hurting, that means that maybe your spirit has been lacking fellowship with God, reading the word, the revelation, or, or, or maybe you haven't been uh, singing. You can sing at home, worshiping God, or just all day long, oh, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus. And, you know, uh, it's, we're all integrated. So when we all have to take good care of it. We have to take good care of uh, our body, soul, and spirit. We've got to feed our spirit with the Word of God. When it, this, The process of God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It, it's uh, bringing those kingdom miracles down. That's the process. Bringing the kingdom miracles down. Whatever He tells you to do, do it. Because it's He that does the works. Hallelujah. Do what he says. Do what he says. Uh, you know, if something, if, if we are bored, 
let's find a way to go bring someone to the kingdom. That'll satisfy your boredom real quick. Go read to the to the old folks. Uh, uh, go uh, uh, volunteer for children, or, or you know, and, and there's so many children that don't. Uh, that don't live in godly households and you just pray over them you know uh, there's so many things that, that you could do to bring that kingdom uh, uh, on earth as it is in heaven hallelujah glory to God glory to God glory to God as he is so are we in this world you know he created us all in this earth to worship him and to be powerful like him. Everything that he wanted in Adam in the Garden of Eden, he wants of us. He wants us to fellowship with him. He wants us to feel feel welcome with him in our presence uh, or in his presence. It, you know, he he wants that that connection with us. And uh, and and he says, you know, I made man in my image uh, uh, so that we can a uh, fellowship. And and of course, you know the story how that got messed up. So he said, I got to start all over again. And that's when he sent Jesus. And, you know, with Jesus, he, he went to heaven. He says, uh, behold, I come quickly. You know, he's still the great I am. You know, he says in, in Revelation 22, 12 says, behold, I am coming quickly. And between that time, he says, occupy. We got to be occupied in the things of God. And, and we, we have to be more spiritually minded. And, and the enemy has dangled materialism so much in front of us that we forget about being spiritually minded and and we've gotten ourselves in so much debt that we have forgotten that that what money is for money is to finance the kingdom and it's coming now it's coming now i mean i can see the the days and when we have a uh uh jeremy pearson's and sarah come and, and, and do a preaching and concert for us and, and Darren McLean and, and Kelly Copeland and Jerry Seville and, and you know I can see that the, the, that takes a it, it takes effort and, and money to finance the kingdom to have big giant revivals you know churches can have revivals hallelujah you know that Brownsville revival outpouring started in a church hallelujah you know I know that God has taken us somewhere and the glory is already here the glory is already here. We've been praying for an awakening to God, and it's here. It's here already. It's here already. And, and I like it. In Isaiah, we're at Isaiah 43, verse 6, and it says, uh, uh, well, starting with 5, Fear not, for I am with you, for I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west, and I will say to the north, Give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar, far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth that means everybody you know that's not saved every friend that you've been in contact that's not living right every relative every stranger that the holy spirit says pray for that person you know uh, that you know that god can do that you know i remember uh, when i was just newly saved and i think i had met you at that time we couldn't go to any restaurant without saying oh, honey i'll be right back god would just draw me to someone and I says, I just, man, I felt such an unction to, to where I would shake. I was just shaking all over. And my my mouth was just quivering. I said, the Lord wants me to pray for you. <laughs> I'm like, 60, 70, 18 years old. And uh, they're like, oh, my God, I'm in a lot of pain. And I was just going to pray for them. Stranger. That, that, that time is here again. Hallelujah. It is here. It is here. It is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you got to know who you are and line up your vocabulary with who you are. Not I can't. Let's never say I can't. Never say I can't. Unless the Lord says, you're not supposed to do this. Okay, I can't do that. You know, because the Lord said. But on other things of victory, never say I can't. Because you can do all things through Christ. Through Christ, not on your own. You know, if we start depending on our own resources, oh, I can do this, I can handle it. You know, be a little careful of that because you need to depend on God so you could see the glories of God working on you. Because what happens when you do things on your own? You have walked in the permissive will of God and not the perfect will of God. How many of you know what I'm talking about? And it's so much better to live in the perfect will of God 
than in the permissive will of God. I'm telling you, hallelujah. Proverbs 4.21 says, um, starting with 20, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. This is a fellowship God, the Godhead wants with us. You know, how we contact, be in contact with God is through the word of God. And, and, and we get too busy. Do not let them depart from your eyes. We're letting them depart from our eyes because, of course, we work from 8 to 5 or whatever. You know, but you can put it, slip them in there a little bit here and there while you're working. Maybe you have uh, the word on, on CD or whatever, on the Bible app. You know, you could have that. It, you might be in or out, but it's in the spirit and the atmosphere. And it says, uh, keep them in the midst of your heart, verse 22, for they are life to those who find them and a health or medicine to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. Being in the word of God helps you when there's an issue. Has anybody ever had an issue? I have this issue with my boss. I have this issue with this situation. You know, I have the an issue with my landlord, you know. But what does it say here? Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. Hallelujah. So when you have issues, it keeps your heart because you are, are letting the word minister to you. And, and you know, if you, you want to worship and go into the Psalms. If you need wisdom, go into the Proverbs. And if you want to see the miracles of God and the way he operates, go into the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and, and all the way. And you'll see that, that, that uh, God is always looking for someone that has faith. He's always looking for faith. When Jesus healed, he perceived that they had faith to be healed. He perceived that the woman with the issue of blood had faith. He, he felt it. He said, who touched me? And Jaira so patient. You know, uh, you know, patience is part of faith. We get too impatient. That's part of our, our mind, will, and emotion, the soulish realm, when we're too impatient. And we want to... Get her done. Hurry up. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, and that's good when you got a project to do. That is good. But when, when we let patient have his perfect work in us, our faith is, is uh, we're, we're in a hope mode. When patience is working on you, you're in a hope mode. Get in the hope boat because that hope boat is going to take you to faith and it's going to come to fruition. You have to have hope. Before faith comes. And, and, and if you feel you're a little impatient about something, stay in hope. Let patient have her perfect work in you. Oh, there's a saying that says, don't ever ask for patience. <laughs> because you're going to go through the ringer with patience, you know. But you let her have her perfect work. It's like, Oh, God, when? Oh, God, when? I don't understand. I don't understand. A lot of times we don't understand uh, because we haven't uh, walked in faith. So we've got to get in the hope boat that that's going to take us to faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And we are God pleasers. Amen. We are God pleasers. And we are going somewhere on this earth. But we need to know the I am who I am. The great I am. The more that you know the I am, the more you uh, are conquering many, many things in your life. You, we conquer, first of all, the first thing we conquer is, is this little thing in our head. It's talking to you all the time. And you have to renew your mind daily with the scripture. You have to renew your mind. And I was just thinking about... Um, uh, you know, there's there. We have a lot of college students in, in this church. Uh, they're just going and going and graduate from one and going to the next level. And it's like, wow, that's a lot of studying. I was just thinking, if we that are not in college use that example of those that are in college of studying, if we do that in the Word of God, where would we be in our spiritual life? Wow, we'd be conquering and conquering and conquering. Oh, there will be so many things that we know that we cannot do because the word is with us. 
You know, let's take that example uh, uh, of, uh, of diligently getting in the Word of God and saying, you know, God, I perhaps you don't really have revelation knowledge of who you are in Christ. Perhaps you don't know the great I am that I am. Perhaps you haven't made revelation that you are a descendant of God. You know, you are his offspring. Well, well, we all have to go to the foot of the cross and ask God to give you that revelation. I just feel like having an altar call online. If you are online and you are, are tuning in with us and you don't know the great I am, you don't know um, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are that one that's got a gap between you and God. Well, I'm inviting you to fill that gap in and just come to God. Come to him. He says, if you come to me, I will in no wise cast out. He says to believe in me. Believe, Jesus says, believe in me. Believe that he died and rose again on the third day. That he died for your sins. Repent of your sins and make him the Lord of your life. Let's all bow our heads right now. And let's lift up the the audience online. Father in heaven. Father, I lift up those that ha that don't know you, Father. They don't know you as a great I am. They don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They have no concept of the sacrifice that was done on the cross for them. Father God, I lift them up to you. And I say to those listening to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm lost. I'm separated from God. I don't want to be lost. I want to be saved. I know that your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for my sins, for my sicknesses, and for my poverty, for my lack. He died on the cross. He was whipped, he was beaten for every disease known to mankind. He was bruised for by iniquity every evil thing that comes in my mind and in my heart. Oh, and he, Father God, oh, for every iniquity, for every outward sin, he took it on the cross and shed that blood for me. And he died and rose on the third day. I receive you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. And I confess you as my Lord and Savior right now. And I thank you, Lord. You said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I believe and I thank you, Lord, that I am saved according to your word. And also I, I know now that I'm engrafted in, that I am now part of your family. And I am the redeemed of the Lord and I will say so. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. And now I enter into all the blessings that salvation has given me through the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for saving me. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The glory is here. Hallelujah. The glory is here. Oh, masikara mando kore bianda kashoto lo bosata. Iri alara bara bianda kore bianda kashoto lo bosi. Ira mando kore bianda kashoto lo bosi kachara bosi. Folks, you have a job to do. We have a job to do. First of all, um, let's work on being more phosphorescent. See those phosphorus lights? You know, I don't know which is brighter, that one or that one. Let's work on being more phosphorescent, that glow, that, that, that glows in a dark world. Let's work on how are we going to reach our neighbor. He says, love your neighbor. Who is my neighbor? Everyone that, that, that is not walking right. For you never know that, that you might be the lifeline to a person that's about to commit suicide. You never know uh, that you are saving a person from being institutionalized. Or saving a person from depending on, on sleeping pills and whatever these pills are that 
pick them up, bring them down, whatever. You are the light in this world. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. That's you too, because you're in him. I want to encourage you this morning to share your testimony. Share your testimony. I was lost, but now I've been found. I was blind, but now I see. I used to believe this way, but now I don't anymore. Now I know that the life which, which Christ lived lives in me. He lives in me. Glory to God. I want to share one more scripture. One more scripture. When you put yourself in that position, this is what I'm going to do. Then cry out to him like Moses did in Exodus 33, 18. He says, show me your glory. Show me your glory. And he said, I'll make all my goodness pass through you. What is his goodness? Oh, my Lord. That has to wait for another preaching. Hallelujah. Oh, that means that your face will shine with his goodness. That means you walk in healing and health. You're uh, walking in abundance. Uh, you're walking in the blessing. Uh, you have more mercy than you ever thought you had before. You have more patience than you thought you ever had before. You're smarter than you ever thought you were before. You know, his goodness, his goodness, his goodness. You have favor everywhere you go. Your footsteps drop blessings. You never have lack. You never have need of anything because he is there for you. And he is on the right hand of the Father ever making intercession for you. Wow. You know how many like it when someone's praying for you? Like when someone says, I've been praying for you. Like, ooh, they're praying for me? That means that they're on their knees saying, Jesus, help Pastor Christine. Oh, man, what a blessing that is to me. Jesus, help Pastor Robert. Jesus, help Jennifer. Jesus, help Bo. Jesus, wow, what a blessing. But when you get revelation that the best intercessor ever is Jesus Christ, after he was crucified and rose again, where did he go sit? At the right hand of the Father, our Father forever making intercession for you wow brother michael he is making intercession for you i just got to get revelation he's calling your name demilo god i give you demilo godly demilo what could he be interceding for us bobby what could he be saying about bobby Oh, he's at the right hand of the Father. Glory to God. We can't lose. We are no losers. Let nobody do this. That used to be an old-fashioned thing. We are no losers. We are winners. We are champions. Hallelujah. <coughs> What's that? I missed it. Glory to God. <coughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God. Oh, we just thank you for the glory, for the glory. Let's just worship him. Do you know that the more that you lift him up and worship him, the more he just wants to bring his glory down like a net on top of us, like a mist on top of us. Oh, Lord, let your glory, Lord, let your glory shine on your people. You are the great I am. Oh, and I'm part of you. You're part of me. Oh, I want to shine that glory in the world. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, tell them you love them. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Oh, not for what you can do for me, but because of who you are. Oh, I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Oh, I thank you, Father God. I thank you for redemption, Lord. Oh, I thank you for your glory. I thank you, Lord, that you said you'll never leave us. you never forsake us. I thank you for being in this house today, Lord. I thank you that you are enlightening our minds today, this morning, right now. You're giving us direction. Lay hands on your, on your temple right now. Lay hands on your temple. Say, God, enlighten me right now the things I need to know. Give me revelation knowledge. 
Give me revelation knowledge. Give me revelation knowledge. Show me what to do. Show me what to say. Show me how to act. Show me what to do, my Lord Jesus. Oh, and I accept your revelation power. I accept your revelation information. I accept it right now. By the point of contact of my fingertips touching my head right now, I receive it. I receive it. I receive the wisdom of God. I receive it. That's it. That's it. Oh, many of you are going to have an aha moment. Aha. That's it. That's it. I Now I know. Now I know. I know. I know. I know what I didn't know before. That's why. This is why. That's what I got to do. Oh, my gosh. It's here. Receive it. Hallelujah. The glory is here. And I thank you for that information, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Hmm. I thank you. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your glory.